I got to tell you, I listened to all three of the quote unquote victory speeches that were done last night by uh, Ted Cruz, Marco Rubio, and Donald Trump. And honestly, um, all three of them really uh, gave me pause. Now, the, obviously, the image you see in front of you is Ted Cruz. And he basically scares me the most. Ted Cruz, throughout his congressional career, has been a bomb thrower. He harkens back to conservative principles. Uh, he's crying his eyes out about uh, Anton Scalia uh, dying, who he considered, and rightfully so, the line of the conservative uh, Supreme Court. And he's making a claim that in order to keep the court the way it is and protect uh, all our rights under the uh, Second Amendment, that we absolutely need to elect him um, in order for the Second Amendment to be able to survive. And he's not alone because the other two guys say the same thing. But it just my gut feeling that if this guy were to get elected, uh, we would have hell to pay. Um, he claims that he is an absolute constitutionalist, which is a bunch of crap, because all he ever wants to uh, harp on are uh, the rights of some people, but not all the people. And when people's rights come into conflict, he always sides with the conservative uh, viewpoints, particularly given uh, religious liberties, etc., where religious liberties belong to all, not just a select group. And the group that uh, he tends to want to defend is the um, basically Christians. And I, honestly, I don't even know if, if he's that big of a defender of the uh, Jewish faith, though he does claim to be a staunch staunch advocate for Israel and that's only because uh, the um, situation that they're in with the um, Palestinians uh, or not just the Palestinians but the uh, people of the uh, Muslim faith in the Middle East but this guy wants to roll back get rid of all of the things that help to protect the people. Now, the second most fearful person, in my opinion, is Marco Rubio. Marco Rubio is also uh, talking about rebuilding the military, uh, creating uh, physical borders, going after ISIS and the Supreme Court. Now, this guy is dangerous, number one, because he's inexperienced. Number two, because I believe, based on his age, which is 45, that the special interest groups uh, probably already have this guy in their pocket, and uh, they will just stick him deeper into their pocket um, if he does get elected because he doesn't have, in my opinion, the wherewithal to stand up for what is right. And I reference um, his walking away from his own uh, Senate legislation for uh, immigration. If for some reason this guy is able to win the nomination, and that is a distinct possibility because of the five people that are left, uh, Trump, Cruz, himself, Rubio, Ben Carson, and uh, John Kasich. Uh, Kasich and um, Carson are going to be out. It's just a question of time. So the Republican establishment is going to fall in line behind this guy. And between the three of them, they are going to take 
uh, the nomination fight all the way to Philadelphia um, at the convention. And I do not believe that any of them are going to have sufficient uh, votes, I'm sorry, uh, delegates, in order to win the uh, nomination outright so that it will become a brokered convention and crazy things happen at brokered conventions. Cruz is trying to uh, generate the narrative that he represents the new Republican Party. He's doing that by utilizing Nikki Haley, who is an Indian American um, and the governor of South Carolina, and Tim Scott, who is an African American and the junior senator from South Carolina. We will see how effective that narrative is as he continues going forward. But in my opinion, uh, he's going to have a, a tough way to go. Not quite as tough as Ted Cruz, because Ted Cruz, based on the demographics of uh, South Carolina, if he were going to beat Donald Trump again, this was the state that Ted Cruz should have done it. So he really has no uh, other stronghold to go to other than uh, potentially uh, Texas. Now, Donald Trump, although I am um, really hesitant and more than hesitant, you know, he, he would be a terrible president, but of the th three, he probably is the least objectionable because at least he has uh, some somewhat decent thinking, but he's a racist just like Ted Cruz is, so I really don't know how, uh, how the country is going to fare with him. When he was asked the question about bringing the country together racially, he never answered the question when they had the, uh, the town hall meeting. He basically uh, jumped back to uh, how great the police were. Well, as everybody knows, whether you're a progressive or a conservative, we have a police problem in this country. But Donald Trump, as well as the other two, failed to recognize that. So what he would do as far as healing the racial divide, given his comments about uh, Hispanics being criminals, about the uh, Muslims all being terrorists, and about the uh, black people uh, contributing to the majority of the crime in this country uh, gives me great pause. I don't know which way this is going to go, but in my opinion, and I will state it for the record, I'm a Bernie Sanders fan, but with his loss in Nevada, and it was only by five points, if he doesn't make tremendous inroads into the African-American community, which is what actually gave Hillary Clinton her victory in Nevada because the Hispanics basically broke for Bernie Sanders and the uh, younger people broke for Bernie Sanders. The older uh, people uh, broke for uh, Hillary Clinton. But uh, Jim Claiborne uh, coming out, endorsing Hillary Clinton, and making phone calls uh, to uh, his uh, friends in uh, Nevada basically brought the uh, African community vote, which represents approximately 9% of the vote, over to Hillary Clinton's side. The African American vote was uh, went for Hillary Clinton uh, approximately uh, 75 to 25, which basically gave her six percent of the total vote, and she only won by five. So it basically was the African American vote that gave her her victory in Nevada. So now let's see what happens with the uh, the Democrats in um, South Carolina, and in particular the African American vote. If they break for her uh, the way that they broke for her in uh, Nevada, then Bernie Sanders is going to have a big problem. 
bottom line is, though, um, we're going to need to elect a Democrat into the office of the presidency in order for us to be able to switch the Supreme Court from a conservative one to a liberal or progressive one, which would in turn help to uh, get uh, our, the uh, voting uh, rights situation across the country back into balance and to get uh, the special interest groups, i.e. Uh, PACs and uh, people of means out of the political process, which is what, in my opinion, is destroying the country. Don't get me wrong, the Democrats have a lot of sins as well, but my number one issue in this election is basically the Supreme Court. And if that Supreme Court uh, gets one, two, three, or four Supreme Court justices swung over to the conservative side, um, I'm going to be really fearful uh, for the country.